We haven't said too much about the geometry of simplices or the geometry behind simplicial complexes. We've been mostly focusing on the combinatorial side. What we want to do is move from combinatorial simplices to geometric simplices. That is going to help us in a number of different ways. First and foremost, you might think the motivation is so that we can draw pictures of simplicial complexes, as we have been doing. We've just had these combinatorial structures, but still we've been drawing pictures. Can we do that? Yes. But what exactly do we mean by a geometric simplex or geometric complex? Let's begin with the definition. The geometric simplex that is spanned by a set of points x, i, as i goes from 0 to k, sitting inside of some Euclidean space r, n, is the closed subset in that Euclidean space given by the following. We take the following linear combination, sum as i goes from 0 to k of t, i times x, i, where these t, i are coefficients. These coefficients have to be positive or non-negative, and they have to sum up to 1. So we're just taking a linear combination of all the possible points, but doing so with non-negative coefficients adding up to 1. Okay, so notice that these points can be any points inside of Rn. There's no notion of independence or what the shape looks like. You could do this for any collection of points in Rn. But, and this is important, we say in addition that the set of points xi that defines the simplex is affinely independent, if and only if, the set of vectors that you get when you take the differences between xi and x0, as i goes from 1 to k, is linearly independent. So, for example... If we have a collection of four points inside of R3, then they are going to form a linearly independent geometric simplex if those three vectors that you get when you take the differences between the xi and the x0 are themselves linearly independent. Try to add another point here, something goes wrong. It's still a geometric simplex, but it is not affinely independent. Now, as we can see, we really do get geometric simplices this way. In particular, we can talk about the standard n simplex. We'll call that delta n. That is going to be the closed subset of Euclidean space r n plus 1 that is spanned by the endpoints of the unit basis vectors e i hat as i goes from 1 to n plus 1. So, for example, in the plane, we get a standard 1 simplex just by that little diagonal line segment thing. The standard 2 simplex lives naturally inside of R3 using the unit basis vectors E1, E2, E3. We can keep going in higher dimensions, a little bit harder to draw accurate pictures, but you can imagine how this works. That is the standard geometric n simplex. Now complexes also have geometric realizations and embeddings. Let's dig into what that means. Here's a more technical definition. We're going to let phi be an assignment of the vertices of a simplicial complex k to points in a Euclidean space Rn. That is phi goes from k0, the vertex set, or the zero skeleton of k, into Rn. Given that phi, that mapping of vertices, the geometric realization of the complex k with respect to phi is the following union. We're going to denote that as k with some like absolute value signs and with little phi as a subscript. That is the union over all simplices sigma and k of the geometric realization of sigma with respect to phi, where by that we mean the geometric simplex that is spanned by the vertices, by the points phi of v sub i for v sub i, the vertices in the simplex sigma. Now that sounds kind of complicated, but it's really just taking a collection, a union of geometric simplices, one for each simplex in the complex. Now what's this look like? Is this nice? Is this really what the combinatorial simplicial complex K looks like? 
No, not necessarily. This is not necessarily a nice representation of the complex at all, because we're not saying anything about affine independence. We could, if we wanted to, smash all of these vertices down to the same point, and that would not be a good representation at all. So, what are we going to do? We're going to give a similar proviso as we gave for geometric simplices. We're going to say that this phi is an affine embedding of the complex K if the following two conditions are met. One, we need the vertex assignment phi to be injective. All the vertices of the complex K go to different places. Two, we need the image vertices to be affinely independent. That means all mass, the entire set of vertices, the entire zero skeleton has to form an affinely independent set when you embed it into Rn via phi. Is this good? Yes, this is good. This is very much a nice representation of the complex. Is that so? Why is that so? Why is it that affine embeddings capture the geometry of a complex faithfully? Consider the following proposition. Any two affine embeddings of a finite simplicial complex are going to give you geometric representations that are homeomorphic. Now remember what that means. You might have to review if you're a little rusty on homeomorphisms. These are the basic topological equivalences. Really means that they're the same space. Okay, back up. What's this mean? This means that if you take a finite simplicial complex affinely embedded in two different ways, it's really the same outcome. You could think of it as the same geometric representation. Is this hard to prove? No, not really. Let's let your complex be K. Let the zero skeleton or the vertex set be V sub I as I goes from zero to K. Let's choose two affine embeddings, phi and C from K0 into Rn. Since affine embeddings look at the collection of vectors that you get when you take differences, let us let capital X be the set of vectors X sub I given by phi of V sub I minus phi of V0. That's a collection of affinely independent vectors based on phi. We're going to do the same thing for C and call that set capital Y, consisting of Y sub I, same number because it's the same number of vertices every time. Now, since phi is an affine embedding, that means that this set capital X is a linearly independent set and it spans a k-dimensional subspace in Rn. But of course, the same thing is true of C, because that too is an affine embedding. So we've got this result for capital Y as well. So we have these two different k-dimensional subspaces in two different copies of Rn. Choose an invertible matrix that sends the set X bijectively to the set Y. And that's really what we need in order to show that the two geometric representations are homeomorphic. Now, the details of that are going to take a little bit of work, but this is really the setup to show that this induces a homeomorphism between the two geometric representations of our complex K. That's it. That's what we wanted to show. So, because of that, we're just not going to get all that worked up about the notation. We're going to denote both a complex and its geometric representation as K. We're going to ignore the little geometric representation absolute value signs. We're going to ignore the phi, since it doesn't really matter. We're just going to be really sloppy as to whether we're talking about a simplicial complex or a geometric representation of the simplicial complex. There's only going to be a few times where we really use this notation and care about it. Most of the time, we're just going to go back and forth, no big deal. And in particular, we can draw some nice pictures. But wait a minute. I'm starting to get a little worried. If our goal was to draw pictures, nice pictures through these geometric representations, I'm a little worried we have a problem here. Why is that? In order to have these geometric representations be super nice the way we've set it up, we need affine independence. In order to have affine independence, we need to be working 
in a really high dimensional space. If we've got a complex with lots and lots of vertices, then we need to embed it in a really high dimensional space in order to make all these vertices uh, finally independent. That is a problem for drawing pictures. And indeed, if we just try to smash everything into 3D, we're going to have simplices crashing into each other. It's, it's going to get kind of ugly. So what do we do? Well, we're going to draw pictures because we're going to draw pictures. We're just going to do it. And we'll try to do so in a way where simplices don't interfere. And sometimes we'll succeed and sometimes we won't. But when we want to really prove theorems, when we want to do mathematics with these things, then we're going to work with affine embeddings and use the result that we have just proved to guarantee that everything is nice and well behaved. So we can do combinatorics when we want. We can do geometry when we want. We can draw pictures when we want. When we need to prove theorems, we'll use the previous proposition.